2025 Camry. It's a hybrid only now through mm-hmm. all the grades. Yep. And Toyota has indicated they are simplifying the Camry lineup. We have jumped in the XSE Sport Trim, yep. but front-wheel drive only, which mm-hmm. means they come in all-wheel drive and front-wheel drive. It's the first time the Camry's been available as an all-wheel drive and hybrid. That hasn't mm. been something you could get before. But in this version, this ninth gen, is only available as a hybrid, which is actually good news. But that means if you get the all-wheel drive version, guess what? It's still hybrid. I like how we have to keep track of the generations of hybrid systems <laughs> and generations of car. Ninth generation Camry, fifth generation hybrid system, and yep. for the first time, it's connected to the 2.5 so 2.5 liter engine. The fifth generation was also used in the Prius, but that's connected to the two liter engine. <laughs> I mean, actually, got it? <laughs> not really. <laughs> the thing is that the new Prius, which we like, of course, we did a long term series on that. We drove it on track. You have to go watch that stuff. We had more fun than we should have. It was incredibly fun (laughs) in a Prius. But that was the introduction of this fifth gen hybrid. Think about this for a second. Toyota has been making hybrids for nearly a quarter of a century. About 25 years. Five generations. They've been manufacturing hybrids and now they're putting it across all their lineup. This Camry, of course, is included. And we're talking like mid to high 40s miles per gallon is what they're projecting. This one says 48 city, 47 highway, and 47 combined. That is really good, and that makes it very compelling in a kind of sporty sedan. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. Road trips, comparisons, test drives, and podcasts. This is Everyday Driver. This car has been such a standard bearer for anybody looking for just straight up transportation, four door sedan. Mm I've never associated with something sporty and actually kind of fun to drive. And I still don't know that it is fun, but this sport trim does have a different setup on the suspension than some of the lower trims. And so there is that. It's and a little it is more secure and you know, more firm. It's ride well over it's here. well controlled. Let's put it that it way. Feels the, somewhat the body tuned, movements actually. are very well controlled. Yeah. There's good dynamics here as far as setting up the car properly. It isn't fundamentally a fun car. This competes directly against the Honda Accord Hybrid that we drove. Which we we, really like. We did, and we actually kind of found some fun Mm -hmm. lurking in that car. Yes. But what Toyota has done is kind of thrown that to the wind a little bit, because to make anything GR at this point... (laughs) I love how you and I just want to... You want to GR everything. I do. It just makes me laugh. But to to make a business case for it, this is the bread and butter. Mm -hmm. This is what makes Toyota money. This is... Mm -hmm. This makes sense. Adding a GR version of this, financially speaking, I don't think makes sense. No. I always have to look at it as a business case. But this Camry, you know what? There's really nothing wrong with it. No. There's nothing really wrong. And there's multiple things improved. I mean, here, here's the thing. The Camry is one of those vehicles that because it is kind has always been like a 7 or 8 in all of the boxes... It's easy to overlook because they sell them in hordes, and they're not they're hordes not, of seriously, Camrys. They're not targeted at people that love to drive. They're mm-hmm. people that need value for money, decent gas mileage, yeah. good amount of space, and I can't believe the amenities I got for the money I spent. And this one's what, like thirty-eight grand? Thirty-eight and change, which is right up against the price of that Honda Accord Hybrid. The thing is, this does everything the Camry has always done with some noticeable improvements. I want to point out, this has the new screen with the new interface that Toyota's been putting in all their vehicles. Of course, that's standard on all of these. The base Camry. We're not in the base. The oh, base Camry. Geez. Wow, he was oh close. Oh, my gosh. That oh, was, my gosh. That was lane splitting on a double yellow by a motorcycle passing an 18-wheeler between me and him. All of that was bad. All of it. Anyway. Oh, my gosh. Whew. Okay. All right. I'm better we now? We almost um, saw a wreck. Yeah, we almost were part of a wreck. That's that's what happened there. His, uh, his uh, bars were near the He mirror. was inside. The- mm-hmm. There was a lot going on there. Most of it bad. Thank you for being with us live while that happened. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so, all right. Shake it off. <laughs> the thing you have to think about is the stuff they have refined, and it is stuff that people are going to like. That base Camry now has more content at the base level than it's ever had before, more electronics. Mm-hmm. This new interface is a huge, very bright screen that works very well. They improved the seats. And I will say this. Hmm. When they talk in the briefing and they say, we improved the seats, I always kind of smile and nod because sure you did. (laughs) 
But I am saying to you now, they improved the seats. These are actually pretty good seats. They're not great, they're not sporting seats, they're not, oh my gosh, the bolsters are so amazing. That's not what this car is about. But I'm sitting here realizing, yeah, I could drive a while. There's definite improvement in seats here and I'm beating on it because that's what you buy the car for. You buy it for not driving that fast, even though this is a great road, and putting the family in it and going places. And it succeeds at that like crazy. We're talking about refinement, not revolution at a car like this. Sure, which is every generation. You yes. expect refinement, yes. but they focused on the things that matter, just like they did with the Prius. They focused on the drivability. So what Toyota has told us is things like throttle response, and most notably, braking, because every time we get in a car with regen brakes, you always feel it, and you mm -hmm. always have to make excuses. So Toyota has worked <laughs> You're right. hard You're right. on all of these. Because they have switched Camry to hybrid only, like many models, you can no longer buy a Camry that isn't a hybrid. Mm. But they have focused on the drivability, which is important. When they say improvements, it can't just be materials. It can't just be styling. It's got to be drivability in the car. Well, and, and you bring up a great point, because if you've been a non-hybrid buyer, but you've been a Camry buyer, you may look at the new Camry and a hybrid and go, I don't want a hybrid. Mm. So Toyota's got to surmount that part of the market and not give them a reason to walk away because it's hybrid. And I will say, many hybrids, and this is an eCVT, and we don't like CVTs, but that's where we're at for technology. That's where we're at. That's where we are. But, <laughs> but they, have, but they have made legitimate throttle response changes here. I mean, granted, I'm in sport mode in the sport version, but there isn't that hybrid lag that's very common that makes so many hybrids feel heavy. When my brain pushes the gas pedal, the car responds kind of equivalently versus that kind of thoughtfulness that hybrids sometimes get where it's like, are, are you sure? This doesn't have Which that. You're, you're feeling a line of code. <laughs> When you exactly, you totally are. And the brakes, they said this, and you know what, Toyota was already doing well at this, but they said they worked even further to make this brake pedal just feel like brake pedal. It's not doing anything special, we don't have to right. let you know about it, you don't even need to know. It just works like you expect, very linear, gets good response. I'm not just mm. saying it because they mentioned it this morning, I'm thinking about it as we drive the car and I'm going, yeah, that is actually what I'm feeling. Ah, it's not just marketing speed. It's not just marketing. Often, it's just That's marketing rare. speed. That's rare. It's very Most often of the just time, marketing it's speed. always just marketing lines of words. Along those lines, yeah, thank you for saying all new. Along really all those new. lines, that's the thing. Every time we go to a car launch, and Toyota brought us out to San Diego, and it's very nice of them, but a, every time you do a launch, they ex describe how a car is, it's always all new. Yeah, it's, it's always all, all new. new. Yep. And uh, most of the time, it's not all new. I'll say this, it's been nicely refined. They've done a good job That's on good their news. refinement. Yes. The interesting thing about sedans is they are a dying breed, but if you're looking for a sedan, and we're big proponents of sedans, you should use autotempest.com. That is the place that we search for everything. I'm not kidding. Research for the podcast, whatever it is. You can find this Camry because some brand new stuff is listed on Autotempest. You can find dealers through autotempest.com or a litany of nationwide and sometimes beyond that searches of Facebook, Marketplace, Craigslist, the stuff that's hard to find, yeah. plus all the big names you've heard of yep. are all they available on Autotempest. One search for everything. Make sure that you use autotempest.com slash everyday as your URL because then they know that we sent you when you're looking for Camrys, especially an XSE, front wheel drive, or any Camry, go to autotempest.com slash everyday. All the cars, one search. Holy man, what the f***? Did you not see the blinker? What the f*** was that about? Did he not have brakes? Well, no, he's, he's not paying attention. What is going on in San Diego? Stupid, inattentive drivers. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Stupid drivers. <laughs> we have a HPD events company to teach you how to... <laughs> Want to drive better? Wanna... Hookedondriving.com. Uh -huh. Events, trips, track days, we can help. You can have fun with us, and it's not even video. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just making my own little ad right now. Yeah. Let's talk about styling for the new Camry. The face of the car is very important, and I like that Toyota has done more refinement mm -hmm. to bring this in line with, with what the Prius has suggested. We recently completed a best of series for 2024 where we went through the best cars from every manufacturer, and I still believe the Prius is the best car Toyota builds, mm. but they use it like Mercedes uses the S-Class. The S-Class sets the styling theme for everything else in the portfolio from there on down. It's always S-Class mm -hmm. and everything else. 
I think Toyota is using the Prius as the styling benchmark, not proportion, but the stylistic the cues yeah. for everything going forward, and that the, the Crown Signia has fallen in line. The Corolla was kind of there, but the GR Corolla now falls in line, and now here it is on the Camry, and it is successful, but it's also standout kind of styling. The Camry has al always been bland. It's always been yeah. a yeah, it is. Yeah. just a four-door sedan to mm -hmm. everyone's eye. So what sets it apart? It is the details on this car. So walk around, look at all the refinements in surface development that make this a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. It suggests hybrid gently because what do AVs have? No front grille, no mouth, no opening because sure. there's no yeah. cooling that needs to happen there. Yeah. So it's a, a bit of both. All they have to do for a GR Camry is to widen the fenders. Put DTM box fenders on this car, and you've got oh, yourself a GT stop. G, GTR. GR Camry. Stop. The Gramry. I just you That stop. would look good on this car. Oh, it would. It would, but no. It's not going to happen. Sit low. It would be interesting. This has a very nice interior. This is the thing Camry's always done very well. For your money, you get all the tech you've heard about in cars. We've reached peak screen years ago with mm. EVs. This is now as big as screens need to be. Yeah, I like the landscape too. It, do, it does look nice. And landscape fits in with the theme of in instrument panels. Yeah, it does. It does not look stuck on and it looks integrated, but it looks interesting. A small critique and that is Piano Black has not died fully yet. We haven't oh. quite killed it with fire yet, apparently. It is still here, but There's fortunately, a lot in this. it's not on things that you touch. It's, I guess, the vent here, but generally you're not going to touch this area. Unfortunately, it's oh, around it's down the cup here. holder. Yeah, it's That's down the here. only downside. Okay, so the that needs to that, die. That should die. That should die. It mm -hmm. just, it looks good in the showroom and it's shiny and. Mm -hmm. It looks great in photos just out of the factory or perfectly polished down for the press photos, and after that, it's just a disaster. Raccoons like shiny things. They grab shiny things and they can't let go. <laughs> It's raccoon spec on mm -hmm. the interior. That's terrifying. Right here. It's only thirty-eight thousand dollars. That is no small change, and it does feel to its price point in here. Would you agree? Yes, but I'll even go you one further. It is very easy to get a Prius, which is smaller than this, within two or three thousand dollars of this. And that's true. That's true. And so if you have a family that really is going to use the back seats a lot, the Prius back seats are fine, but they're not this good. The trunk is good sized on this. This is a more family friendly vehicle in scale than the Prius is. And it was with only a few thousand dollars more. That makes it a really tempting proposition. Your gas mileage isn't quite as good. It's obviously a very different driving experience. That's what I think is most fascinating is while 38 grand isn't nothing, it's right around the average of what cars are costing now. Mm -hmm. And it's only slightly more than the equivalent Prius, which is a smaller car. And Toyota tells us the price has come down from the base version from the prior generation. Mm -hmm. The price is lower across the board. That's pretty interesting. It is. Pretty amazing. Very competitive. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Am I ready? <laughs> I think I'm ready. Your modes, down by the shifter. Unfortunately, it is an eCVT, but you do get the shift knob to use sport mode to shift the gears, <laughs> but you also get paddles behind the wheel. You can interact with the uh, ratios that don't matter. At least we got, got paddles. We, yeah, I suppose. Normal, sport, eco, and EV mode right down here. Okay. All right, full power. Sounds Ugh. very EV. 225 horsepower. You know it. You know what? Not terrible. Not, Not bad. bad. Not bad. Bit of an assist. You can feel the assist. Instantly, I'm feeling like this drives fairly lightweight. It is mm. just over 3,500 pounds, but for a sedan, a four-door sedan that is a hybrid, that's competitive. That's well, you, good. The equivalent EVs are five to 600 pounds more than this. And I will say this, many sports cars now weigh more than this does. Think about that. The M2, that's true. the Mustang, the Z car, they all weigh more than this four-door hybrid sedan. I have a theory, newly formed. That is, starting with the Prius, we were skeptical that any fun has ever lurked deep inside the Prius. You buy a Prius <laughs> and you have died to fun in your life. You've gone right? to where fun died, yes. But Camry has always kind of been a dirty word. Okay. It's always kind of meant that you've given up. There's just no four-door four, four door sedans that can be any fun whatsoever, and mm, I'd, I'd mm. rather have just something new. I know it's going to run. It's just going to run, and that is priority, and so therefore I've died to fun. Mm. But instantly, the first turn-in, to me, feels a little bit crisper than other Camrys before. Okay. This is not All a right. sports car. No. This is in no way. 
but there's a little bit more engagement than prior Camrys. It kind of makes you want to attack a little bit more. 19 inch wheels on this car, brakes that feel normal, and even though it's an eCVT, you can move the lever and use their other their gears. There's a gear on the instrument panel. Uh -huh. it They're not yeah. gears. Yeah. But that turn in, it actually kind of can hang on. It doesn't hustle necessarily, but if you decided to hustle this car, you wouldn't instantly regret it. <laughs> Maybe yeah, you'll regret I, it later I, on. I agree. No, you're, no, you're right. There's I mean, a there... little bit of, it's not feel, it's just a little bit of precision. The responses are what you expect. That's the thing I kept feeling. It, it's not that I really want to drive a Camry hard, no. but I realized that all the responses of the car make sense. There's no weird lag, there's no extra body movements, and that's a very common reality in hybrids and in sedans that are not set up to be an enthusiast car. Granted, this is the sport trim, but this just has a very good body control. That's it, the takeaway that for me. That suspension, that turn-in, it's intriguing, and it's enough to say, yeah, I recommend the Camrys. I mean, we like Toyota products. I feel like they're killing it in pretty much any car they build. They're paying attention, but I feel like motorsports and that thinking Akio Toyota has let trickle down, starting with the GR program, mm -hmm. has kind of started to influence everything, whether you're off-roading or whether you're in a car. Motorsports influences everything because people like to drive. At least we like to drive. We like to drive. No, many, many people don't. Many people don't. I would say it this way. People as a group don't like to drive. Enthusiasts like it quite a bit. They do. And we are speaking to you, yes. We've jumped. We're in the all-wheel drive. It's still the XSE, but it is offered with the all-wheel drive mm -hmm. with that third electric motor in the back, and that bumps the horsepower up to 232 horsepower. That's a net gain. I mean, here's the How's thing. How's it feeling over there? Uh, well, you know, actually, on, on our when we took off, I could tell that the back half of the car was being driven. I actually could it's, feel that. Could you feel the push? Yes, definitely could feel that, which is good. I mean, they have designed this to be sportier than it's been before, better body control. As we noticed in the front-wheel drive version, it's not a revolution, mm -hmm. but I do think that the all-wheel drive drives better, which is interesting. Oh, really? Yes, I do you think can tell this already. One, I think it's got a little bit better body control, interesting. and I feel like it's I can tell the back half's doing something I really can even though it's not profound and it is on demand I can tell that it's doing something which is good okay all the power in the all-wheel drive it's a still an eCVT which means it, it sounds feels a little it sounds like that it shoves a little bit better than the front wheel drive it does it does I agree it's a bit better I can see that you can feel it on the back of a corner yeah I can, you can okay. feel that the back it's half is doing it, something on it? the back of a corner it's giving that little bit of a shove from the back I don't know that it made it more sporty but I think it made it a little more confidence inspiring it's just that little bit of extra shove that makes you know the entire car is involved yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. you know what okay that's a good amount of performance. It's a good amount of just, how do I put this? The chassis is set up correctly, which we said in the front wheel drive one as well. It's just here with all of the drive wheels working, it does help you feel like you can command the corner a little more. I'm not gonna just overwhelm one half of the car. Pleasantly surprised by the change in dynamics going from front wheel drive to all wheel drive. There was a, a slight refinement, I feel like, going from the last gen Camry to the new front wheel drive Camry, and then it's refined that amount again in quality of driving going to the all wheel drive. I'm a little surprised by that, but that's, that's my takeaway. Interesting. Let's go feel some cornery goodness. Ooh, cornery goodness in a Camry, really? The steering feels lighter to me. It feels a little bit less connected okay. on this car. Hmm. Well, it's because the front wheel drive isn't fighting you as much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that rear motor matters. That rear really motor do. matters. Although, what we have here is right on the cusp of going too far with power. This is about as much power as the Camry can handle with this suspension without adding better brakes. Interesting. Good point. That steering feels more disconnected to me than that front-wheel drive car did. Hmm. This feels kind of dead. There wasn't a lot to begin with. There wasn't a lot yeah. to begin with, but this, is, this feels looser and less connected. Okay. I suppose it's just the power going through the front wheels. But this doesn't feel as interesting to me. Okay. When you roll onto the throttle out of the corner, then that back end shoves Helps. you, yeah. and that's interesting. Mm -hmm. This is less, a little bit less engaging on the all-wheel drive, but the all-wheel drive is going to sell. 
Yeah. This is all wheel drive. Uh, look, we're talking about a Camry with turbocharged hybrid assist 230 something horsepower, which means it actually is probably throwing more around than your average 300 uh, horsepower TRD Camry. Has yeah. To yeah. This is notch one of okay. fun drive. I, well, maybe half a notch. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that it's completely dead, and we've driven many cars that are. It's a tiny little bit of interestingness buried okay. in here. It's not very much, but I like that the camera is being pointed in this direction, and I like that XSE exists. The all-wheel drive does shove you through the corner, and the price is right. Thirty-eight thousand dollars, miles per gallon in the forties. I mean, this is this is a very competitive car, and it is a lot of car for the money. I mean. I'd prefer a Grammary. I know you would. Yes. That would be interesting to me. Exactly. Double the horsepower, put the fenders on. Double the horsepower. <laughs> How off base am I? <laughs> Double the horsepower. Let's have 400 horsepower in this put, thing. Put a massive electric motor in the rear to make it really all wheel drive, right? Yeah, okay. Uh huh. Let's There's the 4,500 pound, $50,000 Grammary. We have a $50,000 Corolla. Yeah, that's and a fair point. Where we're at. You're right. That's a very good point. I shouldn't overlook it. Okay. All there's right. there's just taken. a little bit that sort of makes me go, oh, yeah, driving's fun. Dri nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Driving is fun. But there's a little, right? <laughs> is there, there a meter? There's like a meter right there. I wish there were a meter. Where, 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 where it turns into, over to driving fun. The eco and then charge and it shows me power. Yeah. Okay, it still doesn't sound good. But no. You know what? It's just, a, it's just a tiny, it's the tiniest bit. No. It's like, a, did I did I catch some flavor? I thought I caught. Is no. that onion? Mm -mm. Nope. Is that, what is engine. that flavor? Not in the engine or the transmission. I thought I, I thought I tasted something like right there. That's not where fun is. It's a little more eager than it should be, which is mm. encouraging. That's, that's good. That's the throttle response that they told us that they worked on because the throttle response is on point. It is paying attention. And that is not something you typically find in hybrid setups. We've reached a point where driving normally is a compliment. At low speed, this is boring. This no, not, of there's nothing here. There's, but yeah, just yeah, the higher sure. speed, a little bit, the suspension tuning. Mm -hmm. You turn in and you think, oh yeah, I'm in a Camry, but I can't possibly be having that feeling. I continually find it interesting how Toyota is working hybrid through all of their lineup. And in general, not across the board, but in general, we have preferred the hybrid versions of things over the yes. last few years. Yes. And that's, that's and saying something is. about how well they've refined it. And actual driving inputs. That's what I'm they're, appreciating. They're inputs. They have the things that you're feeling have names. Yeah. It's not that <laughs> they're good. standouts, but they have a name. Mm -hmm. You can call it something. Yes, that's good. It's that's not good. just boring controlling the car. They, they, oh, that's an input. Yep. There's there's actual braking. There's actual yeah. turn in. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm technically in sport mode. No, let's. Oh, you upshifted at 37 miles an hour. I was in first gear at 37 miles an hour, mm -hmm. and the engine was unstressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm telling you, there were board meetings about what those ratios should be because they just decided ratios. them. They just decided them. They were tuned on the ring, right? Uh huh. Oh yes, Grammar. the Camry now is tuned on the ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's coming. All y'all are getting. You don't believe me? <laughs> and it's coming, and they're gonna go surprise. The Gramry Ring Edition. Now available for a limited Surprise, time from Toyota. Paul it's 60 right. grand. It's got a half cage in the back and no back seat. Ooh. We're going to sell five. Ooh. They're, most of them are going to go to the museum. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Time to pass some trucks. Well, except the trucks passing oh, the, the trucks. Truck. Not having any of that. Mm, that was that was a classy was move there, sir. So awesome. It's like <laughs> rules don't apply out here. <laughs> oh, at least we have fun. At least we have fun. Oh, my God. Right lane ends. Can we do it? Can this car hang on to a corner? Yeah. Hey, yeah, look. Look at you. Look. Get the last minute pass in. Look at There's that. There's like grip and stuff. There's grip. Chassis control. Wow, I'm impressed. Okay. See? Driven in anger. Look the, at you. The things on this car have names. Mm -hmm. They're called inputs. Oh. The brakes feel normal. Isn't that weird? I mean, good, but weird. Yeah. Good, but weird. It kind of hangs on. There's no steering feel. No. There's actually none. No, not, not but at if all. Through not power at all. through a corner. Yeah. And see, let's get a tune out of these tires, huh? <laughs> yeah. This Camry's moving now. Tuned as intended. That's what I'm liking. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, come on. Paddles aren't working for me. You're, 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 you're trying to 
paddle shift a CVT in anger. I am. There is a limit to what's possible. It's not Paul, a grammar you have, yet. You have found the limit. All right. Can we find yeah. the limits of the tires? Where are they? There it is. Now you're going to scare the cyclist. There it is. Motorcycle is going to be freaked out. <laughs> I heard a little screech. Oh, yeah. For okay. sure. There were a few there. 